In this video, we're going to discuss Rule 240, CTKS Structure first. One of the fastest ways to financial independence inside financial markets is to have rules and have plenty of them. Those rules have a lot to do with how charts intercorrelate and interconnect with each other. Here we're looking at total crypto market cap. The rule is CTKS Structure first. What does this mean? It means that we basically need to see where smart money is buying and selling. We saw that the entire crypto market came up to challenge that 1.153 trillion, but it couldn't hold that smart money sell level. What happened next? It sold down. Where did it sell down to? You might be tempted to say, well, can it just sold down to here? I can see it clearly on the chart, but that's not actually what happened. Something else did. We know that all charts are intercorrelated and interdependent, and we know no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. So therefore, the CTKS structure of Bitcoin was responsible for the bounce. But how do we prove that? We just pop on the indicator. And when you see the indicator, it's probably a little bit hard to see. I'll just draw SCs across these lines. We saw Bitcoin come into the 29,075 range to the 29,125. What actually occurs here? When Bitcoin finds support inside the market, this is a safety net. When total crypto market cap tried to do a breakout, it failed. And it failed because Bitcoin failed. Bitcoin didn't make a higher high here. It actually sold down. It sold through this level of smart money support around that 29,250 level and it came down. But what we need to know is always where are the safety nets? That's why you must always do CTKS structure first. The reason that people panic when price goes up or down, they either <laughs> FOMO in when price is going up or just escape when price is coming down. It's simply because they don't know where smart money is buying and selling. Here, when total crypto market cap came up, there was resistance on Bitcoin through the total chart. That is, when you look at one chart, you're not looking at one chart, you're looking at many. As all charts are intercorrelated and interconnected, Rule 239 is vitally important to apply. CTKS structure overrides. CTKS structure is objective dynamic market structure. How do you practically apply this when looking at total crypto market cap when it was coming up to that $1.153 trillion resistance? It needed to get above that $1.155 trillion in order to make the entire crypto market positive. Had to come back, retest, consolidate potentially because this was quite hard for the entire crypto market to get through. What we knew was total crypto market cap would sell down until Bitcoin actually found smart money support. And smart money support is completely different from recent indicative price. You need to draw up all of price history to get objective dynamic market structure or CTKS structure. And there's a very specific way of doing it. Understanding where the safety nets and where the ceilings are is vitally important. We hit a ceiling in the past 24 hours. The key is, have we hit a floor in terms of total crypto market cap? To answer that question, we need to put on the indicator. And if you want this indicator, just pop across to ctksmethod.org. One thing that we see, the smart money buy area inside crypto is 1.127 trillion. We can see that we were a degree away from that particular floor and closer to the roof. But there's a couple of roofs to get through. And when the roof gets stacked on top of another roof, it's like breaking many, many bamboo sticks in one go. It's very difficult to do. The reason that you do CTKS structure first is because you're probably not trading Bitcoin anyway, and you may have no interest in total. You might be into something like Solana. And when we look at Solana, we understand the total crypto market cap and Bitcoin are exerting their influence on Solana's price momentum. If you pop on the indicator, we can see that there's a level of smart money support 
just playing through Solana's price at that 23.98 level. That's where price came down and stopped and promptly reversed. And we can see there's a structural sell level up at this 25.20 mark. Without the CTKS method, you simply can't see where smart money is buying and selling. It works in reverse as well. CTKS structure overrides and we must look at CTKS structure first. When we throw on the smart money indicator with Bitcoin Cash, what do we see here? We can see that we had a level of smart money support in through this approximately $243.53 mark. When we got through this overhead resistance, the next major area of smart money sell resistance was up here around the 253.86 mark. What did it do? It, we know that when total got hit, total actually sold down until Bitcoin found smart money support. And exactly the same thing happened with Bitcoin Cash. Now Bitcoin Cash is re-challenging that upper band of resistance. Smart money, sell resistance. Here, Bitcoin Cash has been marked up since 2017. We're not marking up Bitcoin Cash and looking at the past couple of months and saying, oh, this is where the resistance is. That's recent indicative price and it will RIP your money. You can see that it doesn't matter what you're trading and the same goes with the stock market. You're just looking at different charts. But in crypto, you must look at total and also Bitcoin before you get into your beloved alts. And remember, all the alts can tell a story. What about Litecoin? What did we see here? We saw a big spike up. What's up here? Let's turn on the smart money indicator. And what do we see right here was a very, very strong level of smart money sell resistance around that 97.86 mark. It, we got up there and the sellers, what does actually cause this big spike up? It's a liquidation in shorts. When the shorts get liquidated, they become forced buyers. They must indeed buy at market. And this is exactly what happens until they get taken out of the market and then price reverts. What do we see here? A big liquidation of longs. Longs become four sellers and that pushes the price down, but it pushes the price down into smart money areas. Many people inside financial markets get a lot of turbulence, a lot of emotional turbulence because they see when price is going up, they get so excited, they just jump on it only to have it smashed back down to earth, not understanding where the real structure is inside the markets. And the reverse goes as well. When smart money sells down and finds an area of support, it will rebound from that nine out of 10 times. If it doesn't rebound, it's going further down. What about when we look at XRP? Hopefully this chart will make a lot more sense. Total crypto market cap had an absolute blow up because the shorts got liquidated, but the shorts found resistance in total crypto market cap. Notice how I'm toting, talking about total crypto market cap in XRP's chart. This is the level that you want to get to. You want to see behind a specific chart to all the charts that influence that particular chart. It's a different way of thinking, but it's a very, very profitable one. What we saw, Total got rejected and our community was paying a lot of attention to Total. It got rejected in a big way. And then what happened? Everything sold down until Bitcoin found support and then the market bounced. But what are the structural level, levels? What's the CTKS structure on XRP? Let's just pop on the indicator. What we can see is up here at that 72.89 area. That is quite a lot of smart money resistance. We knew that there would be issues getting through this area for XRP. And this one is part of the monthly service. What we saw also was that there was an area of smart money support at 70.84, which was just cut through. Why was it cut through? Because it was cut through on Bitcoin as well. Where did we find support? at 6906, just like we found smart money support on Bitcoin. In fact, the smart money support on Bitcoin found smart money support on XRP. 
Rule 446, all markets are intercorrelated and interdependent. A lot of people in crypto, perhaps as much as 95% of crypto investors and traders will not look outside the crypto market. This is a really dangerous thing to do financially. You must look at the tier one charts. For example, the DXY, the US dollar currency index is a tier one chart and there exists a very important relationship between the DXY and the inverse of Bitcoin. What I've done is inverted Bitcoin's price momentum. You can see at the current time, and this does change, sometimes the DXY will move in directional correlation with Bitcoin. They'll move in the same direction. What we can see, if the DXY comes up, we would expect crypto to go down, total to go down, Bitcoin to go down, and your beloved alts. But if the DXY starts to decay, we expect the opposite. Therefore, zooming in on price action, it's essential to know CTKS structure on the DXY because it will directly impact Bitcoin and directly impact total, which will directly impact your beloved alts. When we throw it on, we can see smart money sell resistance at that 101749. We can see that we're just in the process of losing a smart money buy area. If it turns to resistance, it becomes a smart money sell area of 101604. The DXY is currently 101583. Where could the DXY be going? If it's not going up, it's going down to a level of structure. Where's the next level of structure? It's 101,392. Therefore, we would expect positive price momentum inside the crypto market. But you can only understand this if you understand CTKS structure. When we look at the euro versus the US dollar or the euro dollar, there's an inverse relationship between the DXY and the euro dollar. If we're expecting the DXY to decay, we would expect the euro dollar to appreciate in value. But that's actually won't tell us the real story. We need to know what the CTKS structure is. Are we sitting under a mountain of resistance at this current price, which would make it very, very difficult to go up? Or are we setting under or on top of a mountain of support? I'll just throw on the SCs for you. SCs are called Stanfield Zones. They come from the CTKS method. They're aggregations of SLs or Stanfield levels. Here we see with the Euro dollar, now we're in Forex. How interesting. We've moved from the stock market into Forex to understand how crypto might move. And it's always a may because we need to understand exogenous events or external events. Black swans, we talk about those all the time. But the concept is, for the euro dollar, it's sitting on quite a lot of support. It has a fresh air gap up here till it gets into a quite a lot of smart money sell resistance. There's a directional correlation which plays out on Bitcoin versus the euro dollar. And you can see it's really direct. If we expect the euro dollar to come up, the DXY to go down, we would expect Bitcoin to go up. But this also plays into the commodities. When the DXY goes down, it's generally very good for gold. That's why you'll get gold bugs all around the world saying the end of the US dollar is nigh. Why? Because they want gold to skyrocket. Gold loves a good crisis. But rule 240, CTKS structure first. Let's turn on the smart money indicator, the CTKS structure indicator. Now gold has been marked up since 1833, not the past couple of weeks or years or months, but 1833. And what we're seeing from this, there's multiple levels of smart money sell resistance above gold's price at the moment. Even if the DXY starts to go down, the euros and Bitcoin and total start to go up. Gold could have a bit of an issue getting through all of this structural resistance. Overlaying Bitcoin and gold, you can see the association very clearly. Bitcoin is an incredibly sensitive risk on or risk off asset class. The thing to remember, gold is not just dependent on the DXY. Yields come into play. 
Just before getting into yields, it's probably good to just discuss silver quickly. And this is marked up with the CTKS method to show CTKS structure since 1802. When we turn on that indicator, we can see that there's a basic raft of smart money resistance from around that 2440 upwards. That's going to be quite tough for silver to break through. So we need to get an alignment together. We want the DXY to go down, but also the US 2 year and the US 10 year to go down as well. All of these things cross correlate with each other. For example, if the US 2 year and the US 10 year go up, that will put upward pressure on the DXY. You can see you need to look at a lot of things to understand what's going to happen. When it comes to the US 10 year yield, and you can basically look at this as setting your mortgage rates. What we've seen is a bit of a jump up. No wonder Bitcoin sold down. Bitcoin doesn't like increasing yields. But the first things first, we need to see where the CTKS structure is. We can see around this 3.96%, there was a lot of smart money buy areas. These are gravitational fields as well. They don't act simply as a line in the sand. What's important to understand, price will gravitate around these. And that's how we see buyers and sellers power. Right now, we're seeing that this particular smart money area is putting upwards pressure on yields. This will in turn impact the DXY, which will in turn impact the euro dollar, as well as so many other things, including total crypto cap, Bitcoin and your beloved alts. This is why it's incredibly important to know how these levels move. CTKS structure is based on Objective Dynamic Market Structure or ODMS. This means that CTKS structure changes every single month. Every month it changes. What this actually means is last month CTKS structure is nothing like this month CTKS structure. Structure is always shifting in financial markets. Looking at the tier one charts is very important. The S&P 500, the NASDAQ, the VIX, DXY, Bitcoin, gold, US oil, junk bonds, the US 10 year and total. The tier two are very important as well and the tier three. Over time, you'll find that you get more and more synchronized in with the markets and that's rule 603, synchronization profits. You're either making a profit inside financial markets or you're creating a rule. Regret is a really difficult thing to deal with when it comes to losses. Why didn't you sell higher? Why didn't you sell before it turned to a loss? These are things that all investors and traders must deal with. The best thing that you can possibly do, just create a rule from it. Transform your regret into learning. Always do your three-dimensional risk management. Understand that if, for example, you sold out of everything because you thought the markets were going to tank and then the markets rally, just know what you would do in those particular cases or, for example, exactly the opposite happened. It's very easy and it's very human to blame, but unfortunately blame stops learning and the markets will never know you. So you can blame the market or other people, but what actually happens, the market will continue to sell you that lesson until you pay the actual price. What is the price of a lesson? It's just to create a rule. This is a real game changer for people. When people understand, if something doesn't go your way, you just learn something about life. Nothing more. It's no personal reflection. That's why we subscribe to Positive Excellence. We know that any life pullback, anything that doesn't go our way, and there can be so many of those in life, that's just increasing your strength. You're just learning. Learning is a vitally important way to deal with the uncertainty inside financial markets. A lot of people are addicted to certainty. If financial markets were completely certain, you would not not have any return. Or you would have bank interest at the best. Instead, crypto is incredibly volatile, just like Forex. And the stock market's not much better. I'd like to thank Let Me Know Barry for his very kind generosity in offering a CTKS Partial Masterclass Scholarship.
and also to Perparatum, who is also offering a CTKS Partial Masterclass Scholarship. If you pop across to CryptoTechnicalAnalysis.org, you can get details on the CTKS Ambassadors, as well as looking at why the Crypto Trading KS Masterclass was created in the first place. And it's very, very highly regarded. And to everybody who's reached out and given their feedback, thank you so much. It's very, very appreciated. The Masterclass is all about 30 plus years of knowledge transfer inside financial markets. There was a lot of fantastic learning across the weekend and we can see Total has decided to retest if it can get above that $1.153 trillion market. It's really trying. In yesterday's episode, I talked about what is better to get a half a percent, a half of 1% return eight times per day, a 1% return three times per day, a 2% return every three days, a 5% return every five, or a 10% return every 14. Without question, the best return that you would actually get is eight times a half a percent return per day. That would work out to a return on investment. This is just the profit of 1,460% over 365 trading days. Well done to everybody who got that one correct. The thing is, you don't have to make big percentages to make big percentages. I'm constantly amazed by how many people chase huge percentages, never realizing that small percentages would give them bigger percentages than those big percentages would ever give them. But that does take many, many decades to learn, unfortunately. We can see that the total crypto market capitalization is playing into Bitcoin's gravity at the current time. But there is a smart money sell area above around that 29,560 mark. So just keeping that in mind. Have a great day or night ahead, my friends. And Kate and I look forward to catching up with you again tomorrow. Bye for now.